And it is an arresting fact that right across the board, in every single one of the major world faiths, compassion, the ability to feel with the other, in the way we've been thinking about this evening, is the, not only the test of any true religiosity, it is also what will bring us into the presence of what Jews, Christians, and Muslims call God or the divine. One of the five pillars of the faith is zakah, and zakah is, um, is a mandatory arms that must go to eight different categories of people. So not only the poor and the indigent, but also um, people are in debt, uh, people are in any form of slavery. Today we have human trafficking, we have people in prison, so all those programs could receive zakah. Through our charity is how God is expressed to the world through us. That he started out with that God is love, and just to say you love somebody is, is, only, is only a beginning, but to demonstrate it by service or action um, is actually love in action, and therefore that's where God is found. Secular philanthropy is not uh, uh, particularly hard to find or do. There are a lot of opportunities for giving to charitable causes that are entirely secular, that are doing good work in a number of areas in the world. Sadaka is a Hebrew word that is roughly translated as charity, but that really misses the picture. Sadaka comes from the word tzedek, which means righteousness or correctness. And therefore, when you give charity, you're not doing something special, you're doing the right thing. Sadaka also is not about money, it's giving a person their due. So a person doesn't have food, you need, his identity demands that he should have food. If he does not have clothing, he should have clothing. It's an act of justice. I think it's, um, it's the sort of thing that takes us out of individual concern and starts to you know, create a community of, of concern. And humanism is, um, I think, uniquely um, positioned to do that. It is an ethical, moral responsibility, but in it, from Judaism, that is woven into a legal responsibility. We don't have that. Those are woven into one. In other words, it's not just a nice thing to do. It's an obligation. It's what they call a mitzvah, a commandment. The Quran says in several places, la nuridu min kum wa shukura, we do this, neither expecting reward nor expecting any praise. So, um, so, so that's the uh, ethic behind. So it's mandatory for Muslims to be charity. Those three uh, cardinal virtues would be truth, uh, charity, and humility. It's a gift to serve and a privilege um, that when, when people take advantage of that, they realize, oh, I get that's That's what Jesus meant. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least, you did it to me. I was sick and in prison, and you visited me. I was sick. He says, no. I was hungry. I was naked. What we are doing, the, that's the beautiful part of our society, of our vocation. Christ himself made the distinction that I want to make. Uh, the distinction is, if you find a poor man, you, two things you can do. You can give him a fish, or teach him how to fish. The thrust of a service must be to try to find in one's own life the presence of God and to translate that presence into action. So I'm saying that had it not been for members of the clergy, I can tell you there would not have been a movement there or in Montgomery. The Montgomery bus boycott had its meetings at churches. The religious community as a whole supports what we do. In fact, the vast majority of religions uh, are opposed to the death penalty. Even though there are differences, there is uh, common ground, especially in the more progressive religious expressions, and that common ground can be worked. It, it can be uh, actually used to uh, mutual advantage and to the uh, advantage of the common good.